Hello and welcome to Go Church Bradford's online service. I'm Malachi and thank you for joining us today. We're thrilled that you're here. We're a few more days away from Christmas. Five to be exact. And although we're going through some challenging and uncertain times in history, we can be certain about one thing, that God is always good. He's good when we're at our lowest and good when we're at our highest. So good that he sent his son Jesus to save my, all mankind. He is our light. This is what we celebrate at Christmas. The greatest gift that anyone could ever receive. You can hear more about this from our message today by my dad, titled Jesus, the Light of the World. Shortly we will start our service with a time of worship. The words will be on screen, so join in with us then. We want to mention that we won't have our virtual coffee fellowship after service today. However, on Friday the 25th of December, which is Christmas Day, we invite you to join us for our Christmas service at 11 a.m. UK time. So for the next two Sundays, we won't have our online service, but we will resume with our online services from the 10th of January. We pray that you and your loved ones have a wonderful Christmas and a very blessed 2021. For now, join with us as we worship God together. Hello friends, glad to be with you. Here I am with my friends, and it's an honor to join with you to turn our hearts to the Lord together during this season, the season where we remember that his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Wow, that's, that's the reality, is that wherever you are right now, God is with you, God's with us, God is with us. God is with your family. So, Lord, we believe that. And we turn our hearts to you in this moment. And just lift up this prayer to you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Let's pray that together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. This kind of a newer song, it's right from the book of Isaiah. For unto us a child is born. Here we go. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. A son is given, the Messiah, oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 for unto us. A child is born, a son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. The Messiah, oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shine.
try that. For unto us a child is born. Holy, 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 holy. For unto us a child is born. Holy, holy, holy. For unto us a child is born. ears to hear and eyes to see you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's do, um, this is an old hymn. A hundred years ago, this hymn was written. So we join our hearts with their hearts. Here we go. Angels. Angels from the realms of glory light o'er all the earth you who sang creation story now proclaim messiah's birth come and worship come and worship worship christ the newborn king shepherds in the field abiding, watching all the flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Yeah. 
worship Christ, the newborn King. Cause God is with us, even now His love is here. Let's sing that together. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. Cause God is with us, even now His love is here. Love is here, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, come have your way. Lord, we welcome you here, right here. If you want to put your hand over your heart. Lord, I welcome you here in my heart, in my home, in my relationships. Come have your way. Come have your way, Lord. We pray that because we trust you. You're trustworthy. And we can surrender our lives to you afresh today. And we can trust that as we welcome you, you will lead us, you will guide us to good things. Thank you, Lord. Joy to the world. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Let's sing this out together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. Heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, we beat the sounding joy. We beat the sounding joy. We beat, repeat the sounding joy. The joyful sound of our offering As your saints bow down, as your people sing We will rise with you, lifted on your wings And the world will see that our God says Oh, 
joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that our god says families with truth and grace and mercy and compassion prince of peace may your peace reign in our hearts and our relationships and our homes jesus the prince of peace Across the pages of time, He who made every living thing, behold Him. He who heard humanity's cry, left His throne to wake as a child. He became like the least of us. Behold Him, Jesus. Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the roaring lion, oh, be still and behold Him.
adore you. Jesus, we behold you with the eyes of our hearts. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see as we get through this season, as we begin a new year. God, we pray for special grace and vision and protection and provision. We look to you, Lord, as our Savior, our King, we recommit our hearts to you as an act of worship. We recommit our hearts to you as our Savior and as our King. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness throughout this year. In the ups and downs, Lord God, you have been with us. You have been our strengthener, our helper. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you that you have given us the victory. Thank you that we have found life in you. We praise you and we acknowledge you our Lord and Saviour. Today, as we hear your word, I pray that you will grant unto us wisdom and understanding to grow in the knowledge of you. Thank you for your great love that never fails towards us. We give you glory, for you are worthy, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hello everyone, my name is Matthew and I, along with my wife Fina, have the privilege to pastor this amazing church, Go Church Bradford. Now before I get into today's message, I wanted to let you know that we are having a Christmas Day service. Today is our Christmas service and on the 25th of December, at the same time at 11 o'clock in the morning, online, we will be having our Christmas Day service. However, we will not be having a Sunday service on December the 27th not online or in-house physical. So, Merry Christmas everyone. Today's message is titled Jesus, the Light of the World. And it's talking about how in this Christmas season we should be focusing on Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. And Jesus who is the light of the world. Now John 8 verse 12 says, Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, don't you just love Christmas? I love Christmas. One of the things that I love about the Christmas season is all the lights. They are just so amazing. They look so good. You know, up here in the north of England, during winter, it gets dark really, really quick in the evening. It's the season of really short days and really long nights. But when it's nighttime, when it's dark, that's when the Christmas lights really stand out. And that's one of the reasons why I love the Christmas season. Because light always stands out in the dark. Christmas lights up the world. Now, did you know that light is a major theme of the Bible? Jesus said in John 8 verse 12 that I am the light of the world. Now, in 1 John 1 verse 5, it reads like this. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now, here the Bible states that God himself is light. On the very first Christmas, the very, very first one, light played a major role. The angels put on a spectacular light show for the shepherds when they were announcing the birth of Jesus, the light of the world. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. That night, in a field near Bethlehem, there were shepherds watching over their flocks. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendor before them, lighting up the field with the blazing glory of God. And the shepherds were terrified. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard, and it is for everyone everywhere. We know that wise men followed some kind of bright star. They followed a light to find Jesus. Light plays a major role in this season because Christmas is a celebration of God's light entering our world. This light entering our world is a single most important event in history. No other event compares to it. It's so important. It actually splits history, <laughs> honestly, into BC and AD, before the light came and after light has come. What does it mean when it talks about God sending Jesus to be the light of the world? John chapter 1. Before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. He has always been alive and is himself God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Eternal life is in him and this life gives light to all mankind. His life is the light that shines through the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Those five verses are saying that Jesus Christ is the light to light up all mankind. His is a light that cannot be hidden. It cannot be extinguished. The darkness can never turn it off. Now, the darkness here is not a physical darkness, obviously. He's talking about spiritual darkness. Spiritual darkness is when we are separated from God, when our sins separate us from God, when you are separated from God's light, when we are separated from His life and, and everything good that comes with God. And Jesus came to shine a light that can never be extinguished, turned off, put out. He came to bring mankind out of darkness into the light. Now for some of you watching, not all of you, but some, but for some of you, 2020 was a pretty dark year. And honestly, you're looking at 2020 and you might be thinking, I am so glad that this year is coming to an end. And you're looking forward in hope that 2021 will be a better year. For some of you, the pressures of 2020, whether it be in your relationships, finances, physical health, loss of loved ones, sudden abrupt changes in circumstances, you know, there are a lot of reasons for some of you that it's been a tough year. I want to tell you this, God has saved the very best for last. At the end of this year, during this Christmas season, God wants to light up your life. 
He brought you here today to this online service today for a reason. I, I want to make you a guarantee. If you'll listen for the next few minutes and if you'll think about what we are talking about, about what the Bible says, and if you'll open up your life to the light of God's love, to God's light, you will enter 2021 with a new level of brightness, clarity, and understanding that you didn't think possible. If you just let God have His life in you, if you'll just let God shine His light into your life, I, I know that you're not here by accident. God wanted you here. Before you were born, He knew that you would be here watching this online service on December the 20th, 2020, because He wants to light up your life in a way that you would never, ever even imagine. God is light. He wants to lift the darkness off your life. He wants His light to shine in your life. Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus is the light of Christmas. So I want to talk to you about why the light came. What was the purpose of God sending His light into a place of darkness? Do you know the reasons why Jesus came? Do you know the reason why there's a Christmas in the first place? Do you know what He came to do? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Because once you understand what Jesus Christ came to do, once you understand why the light came into this world, you're going to get really, really excited about Christmas. I guarantee you that. So we're going to look at the word light, and I'm going to use it as an acrostic, L-I-G-H-T. So the light of the world came to let us know what God is really like. John chapter 14, verse 8 to 9. Philip spoke up, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be all that we need. Jesus replied, Philip, I've been with you all this time and you still don't know who I am. How could you ask me to show you the Father? For anyone who has looked at me has seen the Father. The first benefit of knowing Jesus personally is confusion is replaced with clarity in your life. When there's light in your life, you get to see things clearly. Now there's a whole lot of things that Jesus brings clarity to. Clarity of purpose of life. Clarity of the value of people. But what I wanted to focus on is one specific clarity that Jesus brings. And that's Jesus Christ came to earth to show us clearly what God is really like. Now why is that important? Why is it important that I know and that you know what God is really like? Let me tell you why. Because a lot of people's fears, not your little ones like you know your fear of spiders or, or something like that, but your big fears. A lot of your fears, a lot of your worries, a lot of your problems are caused because you don't know what God is really like. Now, if you knew what God was really like, you would you would worry a whole lot less. In fact, you wouldn't worry at all. If you knew what God is really like, you wouldn't be afraid of the future so much. If you knew what God is really like, you'd be a whole lot less stressed about life. Because when you don't know what God's like, you get into fear and worry and doubt and despair. When you don't know what God is like, you, you tend to avoid Him. When, when you don't know what God is really like, Instead of running towards God, you tend to run away from God. When you don't know what God is like, you tend to be afraid of Him. When you don't know what God is like, you don't bring your problems to Him. You try to solve them all by yourself. So God says, first of all, you've got to know what I am really like. So I'm going to come to the earth in a human form. Did you know that you can't really love somebody that you don't know? You definitely can't trust someone you don't know. And if you don't know what God is really like, how in the world are you ever going to trust Him? You really can't. So God says, I want you to be clear about what I'm really like, about my nature and my character. Why? Because there's an awful lot of distorted images of God in this world, in this life. Movies, magazines, videos on the web, people's personal opinions. You know, you can get a really distorted idea about God and what he is really like. You can get that from your parents, even from some churches. Often we hear people say, my idea of God is, and whenever you hear that, they're just guessing. The problem of guessing is that your guess is as good as mine, and my guess is as good as yours. What we need when it comes to knowing what God is like, what we don't need is guesses. We need the truth. We need to know the reality. It, it's too important for us to just guess and, and kind of hope. Now, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 9, Jesus replied, Philip, I've been with you all this time and you still don't know who I am. How could you ask me to show you the Father? For anyone who has looked at me has seen the Father. Now, that's a pretty arrogant statement unless it happens to be true. 
Imagine what you would say or think about someone that you know if you saw them one day and they said to you, you know what, when you're looking at me, you're looking at God. You would think that they had gone insane and that that was the most arrogant and prideful person on the face of the planet. Because nobody has ever backed up a claim like that except for Jesus. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen God. I'm God coming to earth so you'll know what God is like. So we could relate and understand God. When God came into the world over 2,000 years ago, of all the ways he could have chosen, he came as a baby. He came into the world the same way that you and I have come into this world. Every one of us came into the world by being born into it. That's, that's the way that Jesus came. Why did he do it that way? Well, because he wanted to save us, not scare us. That's one of the reasons why I think he came that way. Because listen, nobody is afraid of a baby, right? And he wanted to identify with us. He came as a person to identify with other people. He came to show people what God is really like. There are some things about God that you will never know except that Jesus came to this earth to show us and tell us what God is like. For instance, how do you know that God is love? How do you know that? There's only one way you know that because Jesus told us and showed us that God is love. How do we know that God is forgiving? Why well, you don't really except that Jesus told us and he showed us how forgiving God is. How do you know that there is an afterlife after this life? And that you can go to heaven if you accept Jesus into your life. How do you know that? You wouldn't. But Jesus came to tell us and to show us. That's why God says in Colossians 1 verse 15, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. God says, I want you to know what I'm really like. And that's the first reason he sent Jesus. So the light of the world came to let us know what God is really like. And the light of the world came to inform us of truth. In John chapter 18, verse 37, Pilate said, So you are a king. Jesus responded, You say I'm a king? Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. Do you ever get tired of people lying to you? I mean, you go to work and nobody tells you the truth. They tell you what they think you want to hear, but they don't tell you the truth. You meet your friends. They don't have the courage to tell you the truth. Often it's because they know how you might react to the truth. When there's something obviously messing up your life and, the, and your friends, they just kind of skirt around, but they don't tell you what it is. They don't tell you the truth. Why? Because they're afraid they're going to lose your friendship. They're afraid that you can't handle it. They're afraid that they'll be rejected. They want to be politically correct or, or some other reason, but they won't tell you the truth. There's only one person who will always tell you the truth in your life, and that's God. He's going, he will tell you the truth no matter what. Now, some people think that's being judgmental if you tell people the truth, but it's not. Let me give you an example of this. You go to a doctor, you're not feeling good. The doctor does a diagnosis and says, I, I don't want to tell you this, but I've got to tell you the truth. You have got, and then they name some illness, sickness, or disease. That doctor is not being judgmental. They are doing it because they care about you. And when they care about you, they tell you the truth. When they tell you the truth, it's not to hurt you. It's to help you. It's not to harm you. It's to help you get better. They aren't doing it in judgment. They're, doing it, they're telling you the truth because they want to help you. And, and they tell you that so that they can come up with a game plan to get over that sickness, illness, or disease. I'll say this. When God talks to you about things pertaining to your life, he doesn't always say things that you want to hear, but he always tells you the truth and it's always for your good because the truth sets you free. John chapter 8 verse 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So when he says, I don't want you connecting with those guys, they are going to mess you up or don't get involved in that kind of lifestyle because these are the end results. When he says, I want you to do these things over here, but don't do those things over there. He's not being judgmental or limiting He's not trying to stop you having fun. He's being loving because he knows what will make you happy and will be a blessing in your life even more than you do. God is God. He knows everything. And he's always going to tell you the truth in such a way that it's going to be a blessing in your life. And God has the right to point out in your life the truth. God tells us what's true, but he'll always tell us in love, but he will tell us what's true. So here's one aspect of God's truth. That he wants us to know. Ephesians 1 verse 10 to 11. 
And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Now what does this passage of scripture mean? Well, firstly, at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. That means that all of history is moving towards a climax. It's moving towards an end point. And that end point is the reign and rule of Jesus Christ. That's the truth. That's the truth that God wants us to be informed about. Now, verse 11. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to His plan. What is this inheritance that God is talking about? Well, firstly, what is an inheritance? An inheritance is something that is passed on at the owner's death to the heir or those who are entitled to succeed. And the Bible says, hey, here's a truth that God wants us to know. There's an inheritance that's been given unto us. It's been given unto us because someone died and that someone is Jesus. We have an inheritance that's been given unto us because Jesus died. That inheritance is this, that because of Jesus' complete victory over Satan on the triumph of the cross, because of light's complete victory over darkness, we have authority over the dark. We have rights and privileges. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians 2 verse 6, And raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that position is one of authority, honor, and triumph, not one of failure, depression, and defeat. And that's good news as we go into 2021. If 2020 has not been the greatest, then this is good news for you to know. Actually, you might have known it all previously and just forgotten and let it slip. And God wants you to pick that up again. God wants you to be informed that through Jesus, the light of the world, you have triumphed over the enemy and his devices. God wants to inform us of the truth that when we ask Jesus into our lives, we become children of the light and the light always defeats the dark. We no longer have to be under Satan, under darkness, because we have been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and put into the kingdom of light. Colossians 1 verse 13 says, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness, -wee, and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. God wants the body of Christ to know that we aren't a defeated church. We are a triumphant church. He wants to inform us of this truth. That we are to reign in life because the light of the world has defeated the enemy, has defeated the darkness. So the light of the world came to inform us of God's plan and the light of the world came to guide our steps. John 8 verse 12. Later, in one of his talks, Jesus said to the people, I am the light of the world. So if you follow me, you won't be stumbling through the darkness for living light will flood your path. Jesus here is saying, you know what? I'm the light of the world and I want to direct your life. I want to be your guiding light. You know why? Because God, because Jesus can see so much more further than you can. Because He has the biggest light. You know, the problem of walking in the dark is that you can't see where you're going and you end up bumping into things, tripping, falling, and stumbling. And really, you can only walk in the dark in, to some degree of safety if you have a light. If you and only if you're walking where that light is shining. I remember one night when I was, well, I was a young man. I was going for a walk with a bunch of my friends and we were going for a walk in the dark. And we had no lights. And we bumped into, all of us bumped into this electrified fence that a local farmer had put up. And trust me, that was not a good experience for any of us. He, he, he put up a pretty strong fence. Now, you know why we bumped into that fence? Because we were stumbling in the dark with no light. And we couldn't see the fence and we couldn't see the sign on the fence saying electric fence. You know why you get frightened about the future, about 2021? Because you don't know what's around the corner. You don't have much of a light to shine on the darkness of the future. Now, Jesus says, if you follow me, if you stay close to me, you're always going to have light in your life. That means you'll be able to see further, walk in the right paths, connect with the right people. It means you don't have to worry about what's going to happen next year. And for who, for whoever's watching this, and I know there's someone who's watching this and you're worried about 2021, don't worry. When you have the light of the world in your life, your life is going to be okay. 
A lot of our fears happen because we can't see clearly. Now we all face challenging situations and circumstances of life in different areas of life, you know, relationally, financially, physically, mentally. You know, there may be dark days of doubt when you wonder, man, am I up to this? Can I make it in life? You know, dark days of defeat and depression when you feel like I have totally failed, I've blown it, I don't know what to do. When you're in those dark days, do you know what you need to do? When you're in the dark, you need a light. You need a guiding light. You need God's guidance. Now, what do we normally do when we come up to a problem that we can't control on our own? Well, for most people, typically for most people, they don't, they don't turn to Jesus. They don't turn to the light. What we typically do is we go back and we try to find some other source of light. We, we grab our own flashlights instead of the light. Now, we can't see our way through the problem, so we decide we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out on our own, but we're not going to go to God. We're not going to talk to God about it. So we pull out our first flashlight. It says relationships. We start shining it around, and we think, you know, if I could just get married, my life would be great. If I could just have kids, or if my kids would just grow up and leave, you know, my life would be great. We think relationships are going to make our life great. That's not going to fulfill your life. So you reach in the drawer and you pull out another flashlight. And this one says, job, career. If I could just change jobs, then everything would be different. It would be wonderful. And I'll be able to see clearly, I'm just in the wrong job. But that's not going to work out. Or you pull out another one, another flashlight. And this says, location. If I could just move to that country or to that other city, then everything would change. Everything would be great. The problem with that is, when you move, you're taking you with you, and usually the problem is right between your ears. It's usually not the location. So we look at other types of flashlights. You know, some of these things say seminar. If I go to a seminar or or read this book, listen to this tape, it's going to change my life. Or you pull out one that says make more money. That's it. If I could just make more money, then then everything will go smoothly and life will be smooth and I could see more clearly. That's not going to be it either. You don't need those flashlights. You need the light, the light of the world. You need Jesus. You need God in your life. God is not some puny little flashlight. I mean, compared to a flashlight, God is like a searchlight. You know, like what they used to use in the war to spot planes miles up in the air. Except that God's searchlight is like a million times brighter than any searchlight that there's ever been. At least a million times brighter. Jesus said this, I am the light of the world. He's our light. Let me ask you a question. What are you having a hard time figuring out in your life? You've got some problems or challenges in your life right now. I mean, everybody does, right? Everybody faces dark days at some point in time in their lives. When it's dark, what do you need to do? You turn on the light. What do you do when you can't see how it's all going to work out? You flip the switch and you turn on the light. You turn on God's light. And what is the switch that turns God's light on in your life? The switch that turns on God's light is called faith. When you say, God, I don't know what I'm going to do this upcoming year in 2021. I can't figure it out. But I know one thing, I'm going to trust you. Bam! You just flip the switch and you turn on the light. When you say, I don't know what the problem is with my marriage. It's not working out. But I'm going to trust you. I'm, I'm not walking out of this. I'm going to trust you in this. Boom! You just flip the switch and the light came on. Or, you know, God, I'm having a problem at work. I'm having a problem with my health. My finances are falling apart. But I'm going to trust you through all of this. Boom! You just flip the switch and the light comes on. God, I'm having a challenge as it pertains to fear. But I'm going to trust you. I'm going to get over this because I know that you're with me. I'm going to trust you. Boom! You just press the switch and turned on the light. You ask Jesus to help you to shine his light on your life so that you can see clearly and not stumble. So that you know what to do and he will tell you what to do when Jesus, the light of the world, is in your life. So the light of the world came to guide our steps and the light of the world came to heal our hurts. Psalms 103 verse 3, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Jesus came at Christmas time to heal our hurts, to heal a hurting people because all of mankind is hurting. I mean, this is so big, this is so huge, because you know what? No matter who I've talked to, I've discovered one thing. Everybody has been hurt at some point of time of their lives. Everybody. Everybody has a place where they have been hurt. 
It may have been something that happened a long time ago or, or just recently. Something that was said to you and it hurt. Something that was done to you and it hurt. Something that wasn't done to you that should have been done and it hurt. Or maybe it's a hurt about things that you've done and you regret and you feel shame, guilty and you've hidden it away and you're hoping that nobody ever gets to hear about it. But it still hurts. You don't want anybody to know about it because it's painful and embarrassing, but it hurts. Then Christmas comes along and it's supposed to be this happy time and we say that this is the season to celebrate, the season of good cheer, but in reality a lot of people at Christmas time, especially in this year 2020, they're hurting. A lot of people are struggling. But here's the good news. No matter where you are hurting, Jesus Christ can heal it. Whether it be loneliness, resentment, worry, guilt, fear, bitterness, boredom, whatever it is, Jesus Christ can heal your hurt. He is the light of the world. And we all need God's amazing light in our lives. It's, you know, it's pretty amazing what doctors can do these days in healing people, but only God can heal a broken heart. Only God can transform your spirit and make it new. Only God can heal that broken relationship. Only God can revive a destroyed dream. Jesus says, come to me because I came to heal your hurt. John chapter 12 verse 47 says, If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. That's why Jesus came, to save us. He didn't come to condemn us, but to save us. Jesus didn't come to say, you know, I'm going to tell you what a terrible bad person you are. He didn't come to put us down. He came to lift us up. He came to save us. You need a savior. I need a savior. Every person needs a savior. That's why the angels at the very first Christmas said this. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you the most joyful. Note that, joyful. Not sorrowful, but joyful. News ever announced. And it is for everyone. The savior. Yes, the Messiah. The Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem. You hear people using this phrase. If you're a church person, you, got, you would have heard people using this phrase, I'm saved. If you're not a church person, you probably never heard that phrase, I'm saved, and you're wondering what it means. What does that mean? I mean, were they drowning or something? What does it mean when people say, I'm saved? Salvation in the word means freedom. That's what it means. Salvation means freedom. You're set free. Free to become what God meant for you to be. Set free to be all that God has for you. What does Jesus save us from? Well, a lot of things. You know, he saves us from hell. That's definitely something that Jesus saved us from. But there's actually more than that. He saves us from the hopelessness of life. You know, I've been there when, when I've looked at life and I, th I thought there's no hope in life. When life just seems to have no hope, you need Jesus. You need the light of the world. He saves us to a meaningful, purposeful life. He saves us from fear because we can trust Him. He saves us from worry, from doubt, from bitterness because He forgives us and He teaches us how to forgive other people. That's often why people develop bitterness because they don't forgive other people. He saves us from guilt and shame. He saves us from the expectations of other people because we're no longer living to please them. We are living to please others. God. We're living to please Jesus. He saves us from so many things. The ungodly habits, the pain, the hurts, the hang-ups that mess up our lives. He wants to be your savior. Now the Bible says in Psalms 1 and 3, He forgives all my sins and heals me. That's all my sins. It's through the forgiveness of sins that we find emotional healing. You know, most of the world's remedies about emotional hurts, they don't work. Why? Because they just cover up the hurt. They, they just cover up the pain. They don't deal with the root issue. They just soothe you for a night, you know, pop a pill, take some drugs, get drunk, go sleep with a stranger. But the next morning, you've got the same problem. It doesn't resolve anything. It's a temporary solution to soothe the hurt in your heart. You can read a lot of books and they'll tell you what to do to get your life in shape. You know, those, those self-help books. The problem is that they don't give you the power to change. You need a savior for unto you is born a savior. You need Jesus Christ to give you the energy and the power to transform your life. Some of you have been trying to save yourself. That's why Jesus isn't your savior yet. You think, you know, I'm going to get to heaven because my good works outweigh my bad works and I've done a lot of good works and some of them are just awesome works compared to the bad things I've done. The only problem is, 
You only make heaven if you're perfect. You only get in if you're perfect. And you're not, and I'm not. So you need somebody who is perfect to get you in on his merits, on his ticket, and that's Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Listen, if there's any way you could get into heaven without trusting Jesus as your savior, believe me, God would, would have done it that way because it would have saved his son all the pain and anguish of taking the sin of the world and that being put upon him. If you could go to heaven by just trying to be a nice person, then honestly, Christmas is a complete waste of time. The death on the cross was a waste. The resurrection was a waste. But the truth is this, there's no way you're getting into heaven on your own efforts. Heaven is perfect and you're not, and I'm not either. That's why God came up with the plan for the light of the world, Jesus Christ, to come and take our sins. But He can't save you and I until we stop trying to save ourselves. You've got to let it go. Stop trying and start trusting. When you turn to Jesus and you put your trust in Him, God instantly answers you. There's no delay. There's no waiting period. There's no calling off time. It is immediate. The moment you, you pray and cry out to God, you say, Jesus Christ save me. There's no way I'm going into heaven on my own efforts. I've done too many things wrong. I need your help. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. When you say that or, or something along those lines, God moves instantly. That's the way it occurred for me. And I tell you, <laughs> there wasn't much eloquence or proper grammar in my prayer when I said it, but I meant it from the heart. God heard, Jesus heard, and that made all the difference in the world. At the end of the sermon, I'm going to give you a chance to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and open your life to the light of the world. We'll pray a really simple prayer together and you will be saved. You will become a child of God. Be ready when that time comes. So the light of the world came to heal our hurts and the light of the world came to transform our lives. John 10 verse 10, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. In the New King James Version, it says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness. You know, unfortunately, most people never learn how to really live. They just exist. But Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness in three areas of life. New life, abundant life, and eternal life. He takes care of your past, your present, and your future. He says that He wants to give you a new life. That means everything that we've ever done wrong is completely forgiven and forgotten. He absolutely wipes the slate clean. You get a fresh start. I mean, what a deal. The light of the world gives you a new life and deals with your past. I mean, have you ever heard anybody say, I'm born again? What does that mean? Is that like some spooky reincarnation thing, which isn't biblical, by the way? No, it just means that that person says that Jesus has given me a fresh start in life, that everything that I've done prior to before I asked Jesus into my life, any mistakes, they've been forgiven, they've been forgotten, they have been wiped out. And Jesus is saying to me, let's just start over. You don't need to feel guilty about all those things. Let's just start over. That's new life. Secondly, he says, I want to give you an abundant life. What is that? It's a life of meaning, purpose, and significance. You were made for more than just survival. You were made for more than just existing and taking up space. You were, you were made for more than just success. You were made for significance. Jesus calls it the abundant life. It's living the life that God meant for you to live. It's living a life to leave an eternal legacy. It's living a life knowing that what you are doing will count forever. This deals with your present life. And Jesus also deals with your future life. Jesus says, I'm going to give you eternal life. That's God's awesome retirement plan. God is saying, we're going to take care of your past, your present, and your future life. That's God's saying, that's my Christmas gift to you. And it's all wrapped up in the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Who in the world will turn something down like that, right? That's like the best deal that has ever been offered to anyone. You're not getting a better Christmas gift than that ever. 
John chapter 1 says, Before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. He has always been alive and is himself God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Eternal life is in him. And this life gives light to all mankind. His life is the light that shines through the darkness. And the darkness can never extinguish it. Jesus is the light of the world. The light of the world came to let us know what God is really like. We know now what God is really like. We just look at Jesus and we can see what God is like. And the light of the world came to inform us of truth. God has a great plan for us. He wants to let us know what's going to occur in the future and He wants us to be ready for it. The light of the world came to guide our steps. Now when we are walking through life, we need a light to shine on our path so we won't stumble. The light of the world, Jesus came to heal our hurts. Everyone has been hurt, but Jesus came to be our healer and to heal our hurts. And the light of the world came to transform our lives. Jesus came to completely transform our lives, our past lives, our present lives, our future lives. I've been talking about Jesus being the light of the world. He is the light that completely changes our lives. He changes our past, our present, and our future lives. And when we invite Him into our lives, asking Him to be our Lord and Savior, that's what He will do for us. His light is the light that shines forth and takes you out of the kingdom of darkness and into God's kingdom, the kingdom of light. Jesus, the light of the world, takes us out of hell and brings us into heaven. It's God's desire that you go to heaven. It's His desire that you dwell in the kingdom of light. It's the whole reason why His Son, Jesus Christ, was born. It's the whole reason for Christmas, so that mankind would have the certainty of making heaven. Jesus came to set us free. He wants us to live a life of freedom, free from fear, doubt, and despair. And to be in a place overflowing with God's love, joy, and peace. How does that occur in our lives? How does that become real in our lives? It's really simple. Romans 10, 19 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. If you would like to have the light of the world come into your life and transform your past life, your present life, and your future life, all you have to do is say a prayer and mean it from the heart. And if you want to do that now, just repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn away from living for myself, and I want to live for you. I believe you died on the cross for me. You were buried, and on the third day you rose from the grave. I ask you into my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Come and take complete control of my life. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we believe that you've just got born again. You've just gotten saved. You've just entered the kingdom of life. We want to encourage you to get into a Bible-believing church and keep God, keep Jesus first place in your life. If you want to connect with us here at Go Church Bradford, you can do that via social media on Facebook, on Instagram, or Twitter, or you can email us at bradford at gochurch.cc. For everyone who joined us online, thank you for taking the time from your precious weekend to connect with the church. We pray that you're blessed today. We love you all. And hey, Merry Christmas to every single one of you. God bless you all.
Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and life to all He brings Risen with healing in His wings Mild He lays His glory by Born that man no more may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give them second We have 